Welcome to Whiskey and Wonder. All right, all right, all right, everybody. Hello. As you can hear, it is not Megan here today. It's Shelby. It is friend Shelby's filling in. Hello. Um, and we will we will explain why here shortly. Uh, we are Whiskey and Wonder, where we drink us a whiskey every week and we wonder about something. Um, it's Megan's Megan's turn to research this week, and she was nice enough to provide us with her topic. So, this is not my topic. It is not Shelby's topic, and she's <laughs> not this smart. She is nice enough to volunteer to read it instead of me because it is a topic. I ha- I don't I know what the topic is just because of the situation, but it is a topic that definitely is would be more represented by Shelby more more well represented by Shelby than myself. So I appreciate appreciate you. No problem. But every opinion everybody's opinions are valid. Sure. Sure. Um it'll be interesting. So we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a few minutes in the open segment. Um first we'll get into a couple of announcements. So we've kind of really done an overhaul on the the Patreon. Um we have three tiers now that are available to everybody. At least I think they are. I might have forgot to activate one of them. But uh, there's a $2 tier. It's the taster tier. And basically, that gets you the right to vote on the infinity bottles and what goes in there every week. Um, basically, the bourbon, scotch, or rye that we do um, each week. The other whiskeys we're not going to have infinity bottles for. You can vote. I put a poll up on Patreon, and the Patreons go, and they vote. If yes wins... Or if yes gets the majority, it goes in. If no gets the majority, it doesn't. Uh, I keep a list of what's in there. And it's basically making our own blend of whiskeys. Um, cool. what We do bourbons only in one, scotches only in one, and rye's only in one. And we're going to separate out a peated scotch, one for just, just for peated scotches. Um, when will you taste it? We haven't decided yet. Probably when they get full. Um, the idea, next... Right? The next uh, special event i was gonna say it'd be a good special yeah so uh the next tier up is the five dollar tier it is the wonder tier and these prices are monthly um basically it gets you everything from the previous tier plus early episode access to both the video and the podcast and it gives you a code uh, to our store which is whiskeyandwonder.com slash store or slash shop i can't remember um and it gives you a code for a free sticker and you also get, uh, uh, I said, I'm sorry, I said the early access. Um, and we also have a $10 a month tier, which is a connoisseur tier. It gets you everything from the $5 tier, plus you get a, a, a code for the store for an extra 20% off of one order. Um, speaking of the this, this store, go check it out. We've got t-shirts, we've got ladies, we've got men's t-shirts, we've got stickers, and we still have glassware you can purchase. We're looking at adding hats and some other things, but I, right now, unfortunately, the hat issue, I don't like the size that it, that it ends up becoming. Like, it's too small of an area, so we're trying to work through that and figure it out. Um, but definitely check that out. Go to whiskeywonder.com. Nice to have some swag. Yes whiskeywonder.com slash store and get some swag. It helps support us, helps buy whiskeys to do on here and, you know, all that good stuff. Um, the last announcement is the 5,000 listen celebration. Uh, if you're a longtime listener, you know, Megan's got to dress up in a hot pink dress and very, uh, very embarrassing for her. Can't wait um, for this. And shall be myself, Megan in Houston. Her boyfriend are all going to go out to dinner, and we'll document that <laughs> embarrassing. Uh, Where are we at? Are we getting close? Oh, we're past it. Oh, it's done. It's Look just, at me. It's I'm just a, a matter. Behind, so. Yeah, it's just a matter. We've passed it. It's just a matter of us getting the dress, aligning our schedules for the long term listeners. They all know. Okay, oh, I knew we were close last time you and I talked about it, but I didn't realize you passed it. So congrats. Oh well, thank you. Thank and you very congrats, much. Congrats, Megan. I bet you're so excited. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Right now, we just we our, our our schedules are polar opposite, so we've got to really try to get the dress and get make time to go do that, um, and film it. And but it's on the way. We are 
We are doing it. We've looked at several dresses. We just haven't found... It's like almost like buying a wedding dress for me. I want this dress to be perfect. Mm. <laughs> wedding um, dress for Tyler. I can picture that. Oh, yeah. Super cute. I guess I'll wear the tux. Yeah, well... <laughs> We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> lastly, I just want to uh, say happy 4th of July to everybody. This episode is going to come out um, to most people on June 30th. So you guys have a happy 4th. Be safe. Don't blow your fingers and hands off. But have a good time. Yeah, have a good time. Just don't, you know, keep all your digits. We've We've been having people shoot fireworks off around here for weeks now. As, like, of course, as Megan would say, don't drink and drive. Yeah, don't do that either. <laughs> um, check us out on social media. Uh, Instagram is at Whiskey Podcast. You can find me at Whiskey.Tyler and Megan is at Whiskey.Megan. Those will pop up here on the screen from time to time. I'm going to give you the socials for Whiskey and Wonder. They're on the screen. If you're not on the screen, check out the show notes. Or if you're not on YouTube, I'm sorry. Check out the show notes. Um, if you are on YouTube, search Whiskey and Wonder. You can find us. We're working on getting those thousand subscribers to get our own YouTube.com slash Whiskey and Wonder. Um, go to WhiskeyandWonder.com. There's a lot of neat stuff over there on the website. We've built uh, whiskeys that we're interested in trying, that we're looking for, whiskeys that, we're, that we have done, what we rated them, what episode you can hear about those in. Um... Definitely reach out to us if you have any feedback or, you know, have any personal anecdotes or anything, you know, based on any of our topics. If you like a whiskey, you want us to try it, just shoot us an email, talk to us, let us know. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, contact at whiskeyandwonder.com. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff in the show notes. I'm going to leave it, leave it down there. You guys can go check that stuff out if you want to. Um, Lastly, and certainly not least, everybody that does donate, that does, is subscribed on Patreon, that does, um, you know, like and rate and review, that tells their friends, you know, we couldn't do this without you guys, and it makes all the difference in the world. It it helps us keep this going. It helps me go to the liquor store and buy these whiskeys that we can review and, and go to places where I can make contacts so we can get better and harder to find stuff. Um, which I actually made a awesome contact yesterday morning. Shout out to Will uh, if you're listening. So I will be in touch, and we will hopefully get some good stuff with Will's help. Sweet. So with that, we're going to go ahead and move on to the open segment. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Open segment. I just want to make sure you put your phone on vibrate. Okay. It's all, all right. On. Vibrate. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> well, I thought I forgot, or I thought I had forgotten. Anyway, so the open segment, <clears throat> we got a lot to talk about. Like I said, number one, Megan is not here. So Megan had every intention of being here this week. She was on her way. She was literally on her way here. And she. I, I, I'm pretty sure she stopped to get some gas or get something to eat or something and got a text from one of her clients that basically said, uh, I went home after, after, uh, being with Megan at her job today. I don't know how to say it other, <laughs> other than that. Um, and started feeling bad, did a at home test and was positive for COVID. So Megan may or may not be a close contact at this point. So originally we were just going to have her get an uh, N95 mask and come on because I'm not overly worried about it. I already having it. Um, but Shelby brought up a great point and that is that I'm probably going to be around several old people here within the next week or so. Um, because sadly, uh, last night my grandmother died. So RIP Mimi. Yep. Yep. She's in a better place and, no longer suffering. She's not suffering anymore. She's, it's, it's definitely been, it's been easier than I expected it would be, honestly. Um, just seeing her, I, I left work early Friday when the situation arose. And just to make a long story short, she just kind of went downhill really fast. Um, I got to go 
go Friday and say my goodbyes. And <laughs> they didn't expect she would last through the night. And lo and behold, the old lady fought until she was, uh, Stubborn till the last minute. Yeah, she sure was. <laughs> we love but, her. But we went and sat with her a little bit. I, I sat with her Friday and sat with her again yesterday. And, man, it was just, uh, it was tough to, to see her in that shape. And she's just, she wasn't in. Her, some of her signs seemed like they were doing better, and then all of a sudden they just weren't. And mentally she just wasn't there i think it was the best situation for yeah what was expected you know she had always yeah. told you that she never wanted to go into a nursing home and yeah and she was able she was able to not um is this was all brought on by her falling two days in a row um and you know that just once you get to be a certain age that that's a killer so so all the love for you and your family i know this is hard but well, we're always here for you i i appreciate it, it it's been yeah, it's been a weekend <laughs> because on top of on top of that, uh, <laughs> literally it just keeps getting worse. You yeah, know, it's not I, a good weekend. For you, you guys can't see it on camera, and I I know you can hear it in my voice, and I apologize. I am just not as as into it today as as I should be because I am covered from. If you're on YouTube, you see I keep scratching. I'm covered from head to. Uh, mid thigh, basically. <laughs> if you get what Use I'm your saying, imagination. <laughs> with poison ivy, uh, <laughs> to the point where my face is swelling up and I look like the elephant man. My glasses are doing a really good job of hiding it on here. Um, I took a. It was so bad. I've been taking Benadryl today. I napped for a couple hours earlier because of it, and it, my swelling was starting to act up again. So I took another Benadryl. <laughs> so I am groggy and drowsy, and frankly. I've been in a pretty shit mood today uh, between, you know, what happened with Mimi and, and, and having all this poison ivy going on. So if you see me scratching, I apologize. I can't fight it. It's, it's winning. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, other than that, it's just been the same old, same old. Yeah. I would say you've been very busy with your family and, you know, yeah. It's been it's, a rough week. So. Yeah, it's been and and um I know we've kind of chronicled on here a little bit about uh my grandfather and this this it was his wife. Uh my grandfather just went into a, a dementia facility and he's he's been in pretty good spirits with that, but I know this is gonna be really hard on him, even though he's wasn't at home and whatnot and it's just one of those things they had been together for over 60 years and, you know, I kind of expected one of them would go downhill really fast with, without the other one. And frankly, I don't expect, I, I don't know what I expect. Part of me says that Paul Paul will stay in a good, good mental, mental state and he'll keep chugging along. And part of me says that it, you know, it's, it's that law where once you're together for so long, you know, one of them seems to go right after the other one. So I think Papa will be as strong as he can. Yeah, you know? I think absolutely. he's going to try hard and, you know, he's got the support of his church. So I think that will be very helpful for him. And, yeah. you know, just having family around and people to come see him more. And I, th I think he'll be OK. This is obviously not easy. Like you said, they've been together, what, 60 plus years. Is that? Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you exactly off the top so, of my head. It might be might be closer to 65 now. Um, yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, so but all our love goes to your family. I know this is hard to. Well, I I appreciate it. My family appreciates it. Um, I don't really know what else to say other than that. So thank you guys, and I'm sure I'm going to get inundated with emails. And and I thanks in advance. Um, my week's been about the same because I do everything with Tyler. So yeah, <laughs> but the only other thing I can add, and hopefully maybe a little bit more positive note, is that my uh. How do I say, explain this? My role at my job has slightly changed, and I'm getting a little bit more responsibilities. So cool. learning all about new parts of my business and, uh, you know, just taking taking a larger, I think I said this, larger responsibilities and working with some, some team members that I haven't worked with yet. So really excited about it. We got to test out some... <laughs> 
I'm a product manager, whatever. Um, we got to test some of the products that uh, my company makes. That is the perks of dating a product manager. <laughs> yeah, a lot of products. Um, I won't go into which ones they are, but. Pretty cool. Sorry, pretty, I have a cough that's going to be annoying pretty this cool. entire time. Yeah, well, Shelby's, uh, so Shelby did have COVID a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah, so that was fun. That she still got a We're little lingering cough. We're just like adding cough. one thing after the other. Yeah, well, it's just been a heck of a month, month oh. and a half, so. Yeah. Not that COVID is <clears throat> anywhere near what you're going through. But. Well, uh, honestly, honestly, the I got my closure. You know, yeah. so it, it <laughs> really, it's the, the last poison, thing, poison ivy is what's killing me right now. The last thing that Mimi said to both of us was, we love y'all. So that was yep. a sweet way to remember her. Yep. So we're, uh, we're just going to go ahead on that note, I think, and just move it on. We'll talk about what whiskey we're doing today. Opening the bottle. So... Today, we're doing something that I've heard uh, a lot of people really, really prefer this as a daily daily drinker. Yeah. It MSRPs for about uh, 25 sometimes you might find it for $20, 20 30 $30-ish. It's a good deal. And it is 114 proof, made by the Beam Sun... Uh, I'm sorry, not the Beam Suntory Distillery, it's just the Beam... Yeah, maybe it is the Beam Suntory. I don't know. It's the Jim... Oh, shit. Let me get that right real quick. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're doing Old Granddad 114, if I can get this to focus. There it is. 114. You said yep. that's that's the proof? 114 proof, yep. Ooh, so, um, you may or may not have tried this. Ah, okay. Um, we got this in when we went to see... John Five, Shelby's brother, uh, in Nashville a couple weeks ago. Johnny Cinco. Yep. Um, and I know me and him dove into it while we were there. So. Yeah, I know I tried one or two of them, but I don't remember. I know I tried. I don't want to ruin anything in the future, so I won't say. Okay. But I know I tried some of them. So this is uh this is a Beam Suntory whiskey. So. Oh, cool. Uh, with that being said. I guess I'm gonna pour while talking. Sorry, I can do it's, it. It's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can do it. Switching things up. Sorry. Today. Yeah, we're switching things up. Man, I got a whiff of it when I opened the, yeah, the thing. It smells really good though. Um. That. Yeah, that's perfect. I realize I don't have a ton on the history here. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> See if I can find. It smells so good. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even gonna dive into the history. Megan's so much better at that than I am. Um, we'll just go ahead and smell since yeah. Shelby's got it poured. We had so many last minute changes. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it it it's just been a week. Megan <laughs> was probably very prepared for this, as yeah. she always is. So I'm gonna let Shelby start smelling so that. There's a little bit of a... Okay. Do I talk about what I smell? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I smell a lot of caramel. Um, okay. That was pretty heavy. Um, I definitely get a lot of sweet notes. Yeah, maybe caramel and vanilla, like, t together, as most bourbons have. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of all I get right now. What are you smelling? Um, A lot of sweet notes. I I get caramel and vanilla as well. But I'm getting some kind of, um, um, almost like a, a it. It's a spice. I guess mint is a better way of saying it. It's almost like a little minty flavor. Yeah, I was gonna say something plant ish. <laughs> that sounds really stupid. Well, mint is a plant. So. <laughs> I know. Well, originally I was gonna say um, floral, but it's not floral. So plant is what I, that's what I smell, plant. Yeah, I get a little bit of like burn on the, on the smell. Yeah. Um, but it's almost like a minty burn. So those are the main notes. Those are the main notes that I'm getting. Um, 
So what we're supposed to, well, I, I can't say what we're supposed to taste because I couldn't actually find old granddad on the Beam Suntory website. So I'm comparing a couple of other people's notes. Uh, the first one says sweet honey, buttery vanilla, caramel, along with le- leather, tobacco, and uh, black pepper spice with clove and cinnamon. Um, <laughs> the next one is bourbon has some hair on its chest. Uh, <laughs> cinnamon, like brown sugar, rye heat. So, okay, that explains that little bit of minty kind of spice I got. Definitely some rye. Um, apparently old granddad. Oh, there was a firework. Apparently old granddad is uses an above average amount of rye in their mash bill. Um, clove stuck out to me. Clove. I don't know what clove tastes like. That's hard for me to. Yeah. We'll have to get it so you can smell it. Okay. Well, uh, the third one is saying, uh, dark fruit, caramel, vanilla, spice, um, and a syrupy sweet undertone. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Syrupy. I get a little, little mapley maybe. Uh, yep. So Shelby, you tasted it. Yep. I cheated. So I was talking about the smell when I said, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, um, no, you, that's when you're supposed to be tasting right, it. So good, you go, can you can tell in. us about what, what you tasted while I taste. Uh, that's how this works. So yeah. that somebody's talking. Yeah, I'm not the best at it. Um, so I I was kind of tasting it as he was talking about how it's supposed to smell. And the clove, that one hit me. And it's I think that might be like that that plant, like earthy kind of okay. taste and smell. Yeah, there was one one of those uh, said clove was on the nose there. Yeah. Um. I just took my first sip and definitely, definitely some spice to it. But it's not like a, you said 114 and I was like, oh gosh, I'm going to die. Uh, but it, it's not, it's easy to drink really. Yeah. yeah so I, far. I mean. uh, interestingly, the, the finish is long and it just, uh, it's got some, uh, a nice little bit of pepper to it, yeah. but it also has some sweetness in there, some vanilla yep. in the, that finish, which is really interesting. I like the peppery tongue. It like kind of leaves your tongue a little numb for a little bit. Say like I don't know, 20 seconds. I don't know what a long finish is, but that's how long it was on my tongue. I like it. I kind of like it like warms you up. Definitely, definitely a warming whiskey. Um, that one... Uh, I definitely got little, little bits of oak in that one. Um, the sweet was not as up front as I thought it was the first time. I need, I need to wash my, take some water. Yeah. Overall, um, I would not shoot this and I will not because I think it will burn. Uh, but I like the way that it's leaving my tongue feeling. Hopefully I'm not slurring my words because I feel like it's making it so numb that I can't talk properly. <laughs> oh. Wow. What what'd you do? Uh I just I drank some after after having that water. Oh yeah. And I guess that's kind of like a cheap way of adding water to it. <laughs> I don't know. Cheater. Um that really mellowed the spice out. And Did you taste anything different? Yeah, I got some of the dark fruit they were talking about. Um, a little more sweetness as well. A little more, a little bit of brown sugar and cinnamon kind of flavor to it. Okay. I, so. I think, I don't want to say this because I feel like I might be wrong, but cinnamon and clove, I think, are like in the same family. Okay. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Pretty They're sure like cinnamon those baking is just spice. Bark. Yeah. 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 But what are we supposed to be tasting? Um, so, oak, caramel, heavy dark sweets and dark fruits, uh, pepper, baking spices, a little bit of leather, and a light bit of vanilla comes and goes on the back end. So, okay. Leather was the other one that, um, I think you said it in the smells, but I, I tasted it when you were talking about it, and I tasted leather on the initial sip. I don't taste it as much now, but. Um, the second is, uh, leather, tobacco, um, vanilla, cinnamon, 
spicy black pepper, leather, tobacco with lingering chocolate, vanilla, and cinnamon. So I feel like we're, it's pretty straightforward. I'm, I could see why people are saying this is like every day. Yeah. Especially for 20, yeah, 30 bucks. Yeah. That's not bad at yeah, all. Absolutely. Um, interested to try this with a little water after that. Yeah. I was going to say, I'd like to try it cold with ice ball or something. I, uh, so, because I want to see if it, Changes that like peppery kick. You said the water well, did. The so. water usually will. Yeah. Uh, I personally don't. I have found I am not a fan of the ice ball. Okay, but I just at, mean at chilled. The end. Well, see, we'll add some water at the end, um, and that should have the same effect. You don't like the. I don't like the. It down. It, once it gets down towards the end of the glass, it's watered down, and I I just find that I'm not a as big a fan of that as. What about those like? Cubes that are stones, yeah, or stones, yeah, yeah. Um, they're like plastic. I stones. I've used those a handful of times, and I don't. That oh, excuse me, I definitely just burped into the <laughs> mic. Um, I didn't hear it. Okay, well, maybe maybe you guys didn't hear that. Um, I find that it doesn't change. Like adding water changes the flavor of it. I don't think just chilling it actually really changes the flavor all that much in the ones I have used the stones with. So that would be an interesting experiment to try one day. But for now, I'm excited to try this with a drop of water. So I have something dumb to stay, say before we get going. All right. I can't hear you in my headphones. I just realized. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's troubleshoot on the just, fly, guys. I just wanted to make sure because I didn't want it to get... Uh, oh, I hear myself now. You can hear yourself? Yes. Yeah. There All right. Go. Was it that, just, hopefully that, just the volume, not the recorded part? Uh, Yeah, it was just you. It's okay, it's cool. your headphone <laughs> piece. Uh, okay. the, the cable that runs to your headphone is... Uh, Sorry, y'all. I don't do this often. <laughs> well, it... <laughs> At least it wasn't messed up. Yeah, no. I, I, I messed with something over there, and I knew I was going to have to play with it. Man, okay. I am getting serious rash. I on like my hand now. Wrist on the top, on the top. Oh yeah, mm. fun funsies. Ay, ay, ay. I've never ever been this allergic to poison ivy in my life. I don't know what has happened. I might go buy you that soap tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I appreciate look, that. <laughs> you look pretty miserable. Yeah, it's been a rough day. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I got I, here. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm going to take. Uh, I just took a Benadryl before we started this about a half hour ago, and I'm going to take another one before I go to bed. Because I have slept about five hours the last two nights. I got here earlier today, and Tyler's face was so swollen. He looked like he got stung by a bunch of bumblebees. I looked like the <laughs> elephant man. It was pretty sad. I was like, you poor thing. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, Dr. Shelby, to the there, rescue. There's Shelby. Oh, there's wait. Shelby. Have I been promoted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're prescribing me prescriptions, so come on. All right, I'll we're gonna we're gonna now. move on. We're gonna sip on this whiskey, and Shelby is going to present Megan's topic this week. I so. hope I do it justice. It's time for the wonder segment. Okay, I'm going to first start this off. This is my words, not Megan's. Uh, I'm gonna butcher a lot of words in this today. I, it's all right. Megan always does. So do I. <laughs> I'm really bad at this kind of stuff, though. So, anyways, please forgive me for anything that I might um, mispronounce. I did not do it on purpose. Or don't. And write her can, hate mail. And That's you can make too. fun of me all day. It's fine. It's fine. You can write us hate mail and I'll pass it on. <laughs> okay. So, today, I'll be presenting for Megan, and these are all her words. I will not take credit for it because she did an awesome job doing all the research. Um but yeah, please let us know if you have any comments on the subject. We'd like to hear your feedback. All right, everyone. I've got a doozy of a topic today. I'm going to tell you all what my topic is about, and please stick around for just the next 30 seconds before you switch off, no matter your opinion. Oh, uh, hold on. <laughs> the, the topic's in the title of the episode whenever we do it, so you guys all, all are going to know the topic beforehand. Well, then. Yeah, so... <laughs> Hopefully you maybe stick you could, around. Maybe you could change the title. I Put something in there. <laughs> don't think so. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, today I want to go over the history of abortion, focusing heavily on the history of abortion in the United States. 
This is not a legal, illegal debate. This is purely the history of a topic that is extremely, extremely relevant and volatile right now in the United States. Oh, Lord, it is. Yep. Um, I'll start from the first known practices of abortion, starting way back in ancient eras, to the Supreme Court of the United States ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade on June 24th, 2022, literally this past Friday as we record on June 26th. Quick interlude. I've always known I've wanted to do this wonder segment, just never knew quite when. Then on Friday, I realized that now, now is a good time. So I shoved all my research for the topic I was going, for the topic I was doing to the side and leapt headfirst into this one instead. Anyway, back on topic. The wonder segment is not an opinion piece of the legality of, of abortion. It is not here to swing your opinion one way or the other. I won't be making my personal opinion the focus of this topic, though longtime listeners can probably accurately guess how I feel with how often me being liberal is brought up, and I didn't and still don't <laughs> even know what Tyler's opinion on the topic. Uh, so I, I want to take a moment in there and say that Megan and I, I did give her my opinion because she asked. Well, on the when, call. Yeah. yeah, when we were... Uh, texting back and forth about her when she told me what her topic was. And she's like, you might not feel comfortable presenting this. And I was like, I, I don't have any problem presenting it. Um, but we thought it would be good to have a female presence present it. So, and Shelby was nice enough to volunteer. Yeah. So happy to present it. Yep. I like that Megan again, as she's already mentioned is focusing on the history because it's very interesting. It's something I didn't even know. So, when I was reading through it, I, I got, I mean, excited is not the right word, but I was intrigued. intrigued. Yes, yeah. that's a better word. Okay, so back on. Um, everything from here on out is going to be historical. The what happened, not whether the past is re reasonable or, mm, there's one of those words. We're going to skip over it. <laughs> this is not an argument. This is not a debate. This is just fact. I will not guess as to the future of this topic, and I will not project my beliefs and hopes. Again, this is history of abortion. All right, friends. Still here? I hope so. Let's get into it. Abortion can be traced back to ancient times. It seems that as long as humans have been keeping records, there's, they've been performing the deliberate termination of a pregnancy. They've been fucking when they probably shouldn't have been fucking. <laughs> sure, what Tyler said. Many cultures had different methods. These include ingesting a combination of herbs to induce an abortion called artofaciant. Abortofaciant. There we go. With various risks to the to the women, including liver and kidney failure. There was let's try again. There were several concoctions or recipes that were to be made and inserted into the vagina to end a pregnancy, including a paste of mashed ants, foam from the camel's mouth, and tail hairs from a black-tailed deer dissolved in bear fat. What do you think about that? Uh, that sounds like some Native American. <laughs> yeah, it sounds disgusting. Like very natural. Keep that away from me. Hey, if it works, <laughs> it works. <laughs> Uh, these most likely worked because they'd cause a septic abortion, which is an awful and dangerous as it sounds. Who'd have thought the in introduction of infectious bacteria into the body was a good idea? The same people who recommended using crocodile dung for the same thing in ancient Egypt. Some women even volunteered to be violently beaten to terminate an unwanted pregnancy. Doctors used this method as a sneaky way to skirt the rules because... Though they might be banned from performing specific abortion methods, it wasn't written down anywhere that they could beat the absolute shit out of a woman to cause the same effect. There was also the insertion of sharp objects into... You get the idea. Ow. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> yeah. Lots of not very safe methods, but lots of methods nonetheless. Abortion is mentioned in the epic Ramayana, written by ancient Sanskrit. The Vedic laws of ancient Indian talk about preserving the male seed of the upper three castes. Yes. Sorry. 
and punishments for women and excommunication for priests providing abortions. In 1075 BCE, the Assyrian law stated that a woman shall be put to death if she aborts a fetus without her husband's permission, assuming that as long as the husband agreed, there was no penalty. Trying to keep my opinions to myself also. Oh. (laughs) The first ever record of an induced abortion is from 1550 BCE, found on Egyptian papyrus. Across the centuries, records appear across all ancient civilizations. In Japan, during the Edo period, abortion was very prevalent among the peasants due to the famine, striking, and exuberant taxation. Megan likes to use fancy words. I like it. She surely surely does. (laughs) I just wish she would have read it instead of me. Uh, All right. From what historians can tell, abortion was legal in ancient Greece as as Plato casually mentions midwives' ability to induce such during the early weeks of pregnancy. However, a woman could be punished if she sought out an abortion after her husband had died, since if the child was male, it would have claim to his late father's estate. Seranus, a 2nd century Greek physician, wrote a lot about abortion, including detailing what would be known as the Lacedemode. Ian, leap, which was where a woman would jump in the air and try to hit her ass with her heels. Don't <laughs> wait. Don't women try to do that in photos now? Yeah, I don't think they're trying to uh, have oh, well, yeah, 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 I know, but like, I still see pictures of people doing that. I would assume this was a lot harder. But, nonetheless. Uh, Seranus also advised against using sharp objects to terminate a pregnancy as the risk of perforating an organ was incredibly high. Tertullian, a 2nd and 3rd century Christian theologian, described surgical implements which were used in a procedure similar to modern dilation and excavation. One tool had a nicely adjusted flexible frame used for dilation, an annular blade used to cure it, and a blunted or covered hook used for extraction. Ooh, those also sound so medieval. Ugh, I'd be like, get away from me. Well, you got to make do with the times you're in. Yeah, I, I guess. It, you know, it the led, tools you got. Led to other things that we did learn. Yeah. Or not me, but humans, medical people. Uh, the other was a copper needle or spike. He attributed mm. ownership of such items to... Uh, (laughs) Hippocrates. I bet you that's where the Hippocratic Oath comes from. Yeah, actually, she gets to that. Oh, well, look at that. I'm jumping ahead. Sorry, Megan. Anyway, she attributes this to a lot of Greek physicians that a bunch of names that I can't say, and I'm not doing that justice, so I apologize. But... Joe can't read. I can't read. These words are hard. A list of plants which cause abortion was provided in Deviribus Herbarium, an 11th century herbal written in the form of a poem. As far as attitudes towards abortion, they fluctuated throughout time as well. Often in earlier centuries, abortion itself was not seen as illegal, but rather the wife slash woman choosing to do so without her man's permission as a problem. Aristotle wrote that the unlawful abortion would only occur if having sensation and being alive was present. He considered a fetus being soulless until such time, typically at 40 days for a male and 90 days for a female. Before such time, it was considered to have a plant-like soul. They thought plants had souls? I guess so. Hmm. The things we learn. Uh, Hippocrates, Hippocratic Oath, Hippocratic Oath, Hippocrates, Hippocrates, <laughs> Hippocratic Oath, thank you, stated that physicians should not use paralysis to induce abortion. Paralysis? Nope. Oh. All right. Sorry, sorry Megan. Uh, modern doctors think this was because, oh man, there's that word again. P-E-S-S-A-R-I-E-S. That was way too fast for me to try to spell it. Sorry. Could cause vaginal ulcers. 
old thesauris were shaped like inflexible tongs, which were inserted into the vagina for structural or pharmaceutical purposes, including pelvic organ prolapse and urination leakage from incontinence. Are those the little things they use to spread your vagina open? Maybe that's what they're called, and I should know that. Yeah, I don't know why you're asking me this. We're going to Google that later. Uh, Modern pessaries are far more comfortable and safe, typically made from silicone and are used as non-surgical way to treat pelvic prolapses. I don't think it's what I said it was. Anyways. Though some scholars argue... (laughs) Say the word. Hippocratic. Oath meant all forms of abortion. It appears many medical scholars believe it was simply unsafe practices, especially seeing as how the Hippocratic Oath originally forbade physicians from performing surgeries. Originally, physicians and surgeons were not originally considered to be professions and that went hand in hand as they are today. Seranus was extremely outspoken in his support for abortion, as he wrote in his book, Gynecology not just for health complications, but also for emotional immaturity. Ancient Romans did not view fetuses as alive, and thus abortion was not considered homicide, but rather a slight against a father if he had not agreed to terminate his offspring. Opinions began to shift as Christianity spread, but abortion continued to be practiced often. Tertullian, a second and third Century Christian theologian argued that abortion should be performed only in cases in which abnormal positioning of the fetus in the womb would endanger the life of the pregnant woman. St. Augustine in in Indocridian makes passing mention of surgical procedures being performed to remove fetuses which have died in utero. St. Augustine believed that abortion of a fetus and Mattis, a fetus with human limbs and shape, was murder. However, his belief on earlier stage abortion were similar to Aristotle's, though he could neither deny nor affirm whether such partially formed fetuses would be resurrected as full people at the time of the second coming. So a lot of, I mean, and this is how I learned a lot about like abortions is, is through your religion. And it seems like that was heavily prevalent at this time. And I think still is today. Well, they certainly have an opinion on it. Yeah. And they make it known. Yeah, I think that was a lot of things. Um, the Legis Hendriki Primi, written in uh, wow, 1115, treated pre-quickening abortions as a misdemeanor and post-quickening abortions as carrying a lesser penalty than homicide. Quickening, a term often used interchangeably with insolment or animation, was associated with the first movement of the fetus in utero. This movement is generally felt by women sometime in the third to fifth month of pregnancy. Midwives who performed abortions were accused of committing witchcraft in Malaeus Maleficarum, the Hammer of the Witches, published in 1487, as a witch hunting manual in Germany. Many modern forms of Christianity oppose abortion to varying forms, though some churches favor, again in varying forms, permitting the practice. Judaism has always permitted the practice as the life of, of the mother is a priority in the case of abortion. According to the Jewish, should be seen as a social issue, not a religious one. While researching this topic, I found a great article that very concisely and neatly goes over all of the history of abortion up through the summer of 1985 when it was written by a G. Hovey. G. Hovey? However, it is very much not unbiased as Hovey clearly makes their stand on pro-choice. Because of its lack of bias, I have not included any sources from said article. But if you're interested, you can find it published on the National Library of Medicine's website. Reference number 12340403. And now that we've talked a lot about past views on abortion across the world, I'm going to switch gears and spend the rest of the Wonder segment focusing primarily on American history. Abortion has been a hot topic in the United 
states of America since since Europeans first colonized here. Though for many years, there was no abortion laws, and for a while, it wasn't even really frowned upon. Aaron Blakemore, a brilliant journalist and historian who has written for National Geographic History, Dot com and the Atlantic Time and Smithsonian and more. I'm stealing several. Oh, geez, words are so hard. I'm now you st- see what we go through every yeah, single week. Yeah, I don't reading why, why we stumble on words like reading <laughs> this stuff off of whatever device it's on. It there's so many words. Sometimes you get your lines crossed and I know, things. And I feel like jumble. I'm butchering this for Megan. No, I think I you're doing a great, a great job. job. Okay, thanks. Anyways, back to it. So this Erin Blakemore, who's a brilliant journalist, um, she says, I'm stealing several of her words for the next few minutes. If anyone has researched this and says, huh, that seems familiar. It's familiar because Erin Blakemore is great, and I can't, I can't write her words better than she can. So give her, a like, give her a like and follow and everything. Legal historian Carla Spivak writes that church officials in the early days of the Republic frowned upon the idea of abortion, not because, of, not because of the fetus or idea of murder, but because it was seen as evidence of either illicit or premarital sex. I'm not woofing at what was said. I'm woofing at trying to read again. Yeah, okay. uh, I've, I got that. Okay. I'm sorry. sorry. Maybe, our, maybe our listeners didn't, though. Okay. It was very rare for legal cases to involve abortion, and when it did, it was often like the 1740 case in Connecticut where a man and a doctor were tried for a misdemeanor for a botched abortion that resulted in the death of a woman, Sarah Grovesner. Grovesner. Venor. You keep looking at me like you want I'm me to sorry. help you, and I cannot see the words. <laughs> no, I just feel terrible. Okay. Um, it's fine. <sighs> but, I don't. I, I don't know if Megan would pronounce them all correctly either. So okay. All right, I'm going to start this paragraph over because I think it's important. It was very rare for legal cases to involve abortion. When it did, when it did, it it was often like the 1740 case in Connecticut where a man and a doctor were tried for a misdemeanor for a botched abortion that resulted in the death of a woman, Sarah. But even that case wasn't about the procedure itself, but rather the men's role in Sarah's death. Lauren McLevore Thompson, a historian and assistant professor at Kennesaw State University, says that abortion in the first trimester would have been very, very common. In fact, in an era before reliable pregnancy tests, abortion was hardly blinked at if it occurred before the quickening, which I explained a bit ago. A pregnancy could be confirmed in that time only by the mother beginning to feel the fetus begin to kick and move. Often, women didn't even calculate a due date until the quickening, which happened during the second trimester. Uh, and she quotes, it was really a decision that a woman could choose in private, McLevore Thompson says. A pregnant woman might consult with a midwife or head to her local drugstore for an over-the-counter uh, patent medicine or douching device. If she owned a book like, 18, like the 1855 Handbook of Domestic Medic- Medicine, she could have opened it to the section on imid- Amen agogs substances that provoked uterine bleeding. Though the entry did not mention pregnancy or abortion by name, it did reference promoting the monthly discharge from the uterus. Though reasons varied, a lack of reliable contra- contraception, the disgrace of bearing a child outside of marriage, and the dangers of childbirth were the main reasons women terminated their pregnancies. Though birth rates were high in 1835, the average woman would give birth more than six times during her lifetime. Many women wanted to limit the number of times they would have to carry and bear a child. In an era before modern medical procedures, the grave dangers of childbirth were widely understood. In the words of historian Judith Walzer Levite, women knew that if procreation did not kill them or their babies, it would maim them for life. 
reading all of this reminds me of um, the movie. Uh, Juno? Nope. Um, the one with Patrick Swayze. Dirty Dancing. Yeah. Never seen it. Oh, one of the main characters. Well, she's kind of a side character. She gets pregnant and wants to have an abortion. Anyways. Um, it is estimated at 35% of 19th century pregnancies ended due to abortion. Wow, that's pretty high. 35%. Yeah. For enslaved women, abortion was more tightly regulated because their children were seen as property. In the Journal of American Studies, historian Lise M. Perrin writes that many slaveholders were paranoid about abortion on their plantations. She documented that at least one slaveholder locked an enslaved woman up and stripped her of privileges because he suspected she had self-induced a miscarriage. Still, Bond's women's medical care was usually left to black midwives who practiced folk medicine, and at least some enslaved women are known to have used artibishopins, chewing cotton roots or ingesting substances like calomel or Turpentine. Turpentine? Yep, that. Middle and upper class white women, however, had an advantage when it came to detecting and treating unwanted pregnancies in the 19th century. Their strictly defined roles in society held that the home and issues of reproductive health were a woman's realm. And so women, not doctors, were the ones who held and passed down knowledge about pregnancy, childbirth, and reproductive control. It gave them a space to make their own decisions about the reproductive health, McLevore Thompson says. That would slowly change through the century as the first abortion laws slowly made their ways onto the books. Most were focused on unregulated patent medicines and abortions pursued after quickening. The first codified in Connecticut in 1821. Punished any person who provided or took poison or other noxious and destructive substances with the intent to cause the miscarriage of any woman than being quick with a child. Patent medicines were a particular concern. They were available without prescriptions, and their procedures would manufacture them with whatever ingredients they wish and advertise them however they liked. Many such medicines were artibishifents and were advertised as such, and they were of particular concern to doctors. As physicians professionalized in the mid-19th century, they increasingly argued that licensed male doctors, not female midwives, should care for women throughout the reproductive cycle. With that, they began to denounce abortion. Gynecologist Horatio Storer led the charge. In 1857, just a year after joining the barely decade-old American Medical Association, Storer be began pushing the group to explore what he called criminal abortion. Storer argued that abortion was immoral and caused derangement in women because it interfered with nature. He lobbied for the association to think of abortion not as a medical act, but a grave crime, one that lowered the profession as a whole. A power player within the association, he gathered fellow physicians into a crusade called the Physician's Campaign Against Abortion. The doctor's public stance helped serve as justification for an increasing number of cr criminal statutes. For its opponents, abortion was as much a social evil as a moral one. The influx of immigrants, the growth of cities, and the end of slavery promoted nat nativists' fear that white Americans, I think that's supposed to say nativists' fears, that white Americans were not having enough babies to starve off the dominance of groups they found undesirable. This promoted physicians like Storer to argue that white women should have babies for the future destiny of the nation. By 1900s, writes University of Oregon historian James C. Moore in his book, Abortion in America, the United States completed its transition from a nation without abortion laws of any sort to a nation where 
abortion was legally and officially prescribed. Just 10 years later, every state in the nation had anti-abortion laws, though many of these laws included exceptions for pregnancies that endangered the life of the mother. With the help of the U.S. Postal Inspector named Anthony Comstock, it had also become harder to access once common information on how to end an unwanted pregnancy. The 1873 Comstock Act made it illegal to send obscene materials, including information about abortion or contraception, through the mail or across state lines. Americans understood that abortion and birth control went hand in hand, McLevore Thompson says. The combination of anti-obscenity laws, criminal statutes, and the 1906 Pure Food and Drug Act, which made it unlawful to make, sell, or transport misbranded or deleterious drugs or medicines, made it increasingly difficult for women to access safer forms of abortion. The legal punishments in place absolutely had a chilling effect, says McLevore Thompson, and yet, just like that, Just like a hundred years earlier, women still sought them frequently. As the 20th century century dawned, under-the-table surgical abortions became more common, discreetly practiced by physicians who advertised by word of mouth to those who could afford their services. Those who could not used old herbal recipes, drank creative concoctions, douched with substances like Lysol, or attempted to remove the fetuses on their own. Gosh, sounds terrifying. Advocates of the growing birth control movement even used now illegal abortion to argue for legal contraception. Birth control pioneer Margaret Sanger said that she was inspired to make teaching women about contraceptives her career after treating a woman who died from a self-induced abortion, a practice she called a disgrace to civilized community. It's still up for debate how frequently women sought abortions in the 20th century and how often they died from self-induced or botched back-alley abortions. In 1942, the question vexed the Bureau of Consensus Chief Statistician. Nope. Statistician. Yep, that. Albert Dunn who noted that despite the lack of accurate reporting, abortion is evidently still one of the greatest problems to be met in lowering further the maternal mortality rate for the country. By 1967, abortion was a felony in nearly every state, with few provisions for the health of the mother or pregnancy arising from rape. But all that changed in the 1970s. States across the country had begun to consider their laws and loosen their restrictions on abortion, and in 1973, the Supreme Court seemingly settled the question with two landmark rulings, Roe v. Wade and the lesser-known but equally important Doe v. Bolton. That made terminating a pregnancy a legal right nationwide. Georgia law permitted abortion only in cases of rape, severe fetal deformity, or the possibility of severe or fatal injury to the mother. Other restrictions included the requirement that the procedure be approved in writing by three physicians and by a three-member special committee, either that one, continued pregnancy would endanger the pregnant woman's life or seriously seriously and permanently injure her health, Two, the fetus would very likely be born with a grave, permanent, and irremediable mental or physical defect. Or three, the pregnancy resulted from rape or incest. In addition, only Georgia residents could receive abortion under this statutory scheme. Non-residents could not have an abortion in Georgia under any circumstances. In Doe v. Bolton, the plaintiff the plaintiff, a pregnant woman who was given pseudonym, 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 duh. Oh my gosh. Given a pseudonym? Yeah. Oh Lord. I did read most of this, but I didn't get to the end before we started. So, okay. sorry. Okay. The plaintiff, a pregnant woman who was given this pseudonym, Mary Doe, in court papers to protect her identity, sued Arthur K. Bolton, 
then the Attorney General of Georgia, as the official responsible for enforcing the law in the United States District Court for the Northern, Northern District of Georgia. Margie Pitt, Pitts Hames was the attorney fighting for Doe. She claimed that Mrs. Doe had a neurochemical disorder, which in her and her physician's opinion made it inadvisable to continue her pregnancy. She argued that the only way to prevent it prevent Mrs. Doe from getting pregnant would be if she and Ms. Mr. Doe completely abstained from sex, which would negatively impact their marital status, marital relationship. A three-judge panel ruled that the conditional restrictions held by Georgia was unconstitutional and Doe versus Bolton was won. In Roe versus Wade, the more well-known case, of course, Roe versus Wade, but is nearly identical in its contents. Uh, the case was brought by Norma McCorvey, known by legal pseudonym Jane Rowe, who in 1969 became, became pregnant with her third child. McCorvey wanted an abortion but lived in Texas, where abortion was illegal except when necessary to save the mother's life. Her attorneys, Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey, filed a lawsuit on her behalf in the U.S. federal court against her local district's attorney, Henry Wade, alleging that Texas, Texas's abortion laws were unconstitutional. On January 22, 1973, the Supreme Court issued a 72 decision holding that the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution provides a fundamental right to privacy which protects a woman's right to an abortion. Over the past several decades, pro-life and pro-choice sides have fought to both protect the right to an abortion and to overturn that right. It was the case, it was with the case Dobbs versus Jackson's Women's Health Organization that just ruled on June 24, 2022, modern law would change. The case was about a constitution constitutionality of a 2018 Mississippi state law that banned most abortion operations after the first 15 weeks of pregnancy. Lower courts had prevented enforcement of the law with preliminary injunctions. The injunctions were based on the ruling in Planned Parenthood v. Casey, which had prevented states from banning abortion before fetal viability, generally within the first 24 weeks on the basis that a woman's choice for abortion during that time is protected by rights of privacy under the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Oral arguments before the Supreme Court were held in December 2021. On May 2, 2022, Politico published a leaked draft majority opinion by Justice Samuel Alito. It would overturn Roe and Casey by nullifying the specific privacy rights in question, eliminating federal involvement, and leaving the issue to be determined by the states. Through a statement made by the Chief Justice of the United States, John Roberts, the court confirmed the document's authenticity, but said that it does not represent a decision by the court or the final position of any member on the issues of this case. The decision was issued on June 24, 2022, Ruling 6-3 to reserve the lower court rulings. A more narrow 5-4 to four ruling. I think you mean reverse, not reserve. Yes, I'm sorry. Let me read that again. The decision was issued on June 24, 2022, ruling 6-3 to three to reverse the lower court rulings. A more narrow 5-4 to four ruling overturned Roe and Casey. The majority opinion stated that abortion was not a constitutional right and the states should have discretion, discretion in regulating abortion. The majority opinion, written by Alito, was substantially similar to the leaked draft. Chief Justice Roberts did not join the majority in the opinion to overturn Roe and Casey, but agreed with the judgment upholding the Mississippi law. And here, we've caught up to modern history. I hope I've succeeded in educating everyone still listening while remaining unbiased. And I also hope that I didn't butcher that too much so no. that you didn't understand it. No, I think it was pretty pretty good. A couple of words. Yeah, sorry. There, but I don't think Megan and I could have done a better job. So, Thanks. I think I got um, uh, 
round of applause for Shelby <laughs> stepping in and, and Thanks. Uh, doing round, that for Megan. A round of applause for Megan, too, because that's a hard topic yeah. to stay unbiased to. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, she really spoke to the history, and I think she did a great job of that. It is. I think, uh, as, as Megan wrote early on, you know, those that know her probably fairly confident in her opinion and, um, uh, we're, we're not really going to get into opinions on here. Um, so yeah, I think anything I would say right now would be far too opinionated. So I, (laughs) yeah, well, um, so if you're looking for opinions and, and fighting and arguing and whatnot and debating, you're not going to get that here. You're going to get the unbiased look. Yeah. Feel free to email if you want to argue. Or, or, or if you or just want to, you know, talk with either yeah. Megan or Tyler about their beliefs. And yeah. I'm yeah. sure they will share them with you on a one-to-one. Absolutely. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and move on out of this. Trivia with Tyler. All right. I want, sorry, I'm fucking around here. I want you to dip your finger in that. I want, I want you to do it for mine because I've got, I've been scratching. I've got crap all over mine. Do about three drops of water, please. There we go. That's the ticket. That's the stuff. All right. Uh, sorry, got to get my water back now. All right, trivia with Tyler. Here we go. So I have you ever heard of the uh, Large Hadron Collider that they built in Switzerland? No. Okay, so it's this gigantic uh, machine that they built to, <laughs> when they turned it on, they thought it might create a black hole and destroy the world. Uh, it's very physics-related helping. What's it called? The What's it called? Large Hadron Collider. It helps determine... It's like cutting edge of physics. Anyway. I feel like I heard, maybe heard of it. In, is it new? It's in Switzerland. No, they did this okay. when I was in high school. I was going to say, I think I maybe heard of this in Big Bang Theory. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, you have. Okay. Um, so the Large Hadron Collider had to be turned off for a period of time because a bit of a baguette was found inside of it. <laughs> so, so somebody done fucked up. As Shelby took a drink and I about killed her. Um, Sorry. So that was rough. I took a drink. Uh, always make sure if you're at work, even if you're working on the Large Hadron Collider, that you know where your lunch is, because leaving it around is not good. <laughs> Final thoughts. Um. So I want to make a note that. As I was drinking while you were presenting, um, you guys might have saw me make some faces, which I just made another little bit of a face as I was saying that. Um, I got definitely some chocolate in there uh, throughout, you know, throughout the Wonder segment, and I got a lot more of it with a couple drops of water here just now. Um, I actually think I got spicier. I, either that or I, just because I choked on whatever I was drinking. Yeah. Well, you also just drank oh. Pepsi Zero and tainted your palate. So. Oops. Sorry. Um. So I it it really dropped the burn down for me. Uh, I brought out a lot more of the 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 cinnamon and the chocolate in it um, for me personally with the water. I really like it with the water. So now that I've taken another drink of it, and kind of washed out the super sweet Pepsi. Um, I still taste like all the similar things in the beginning that I was tasting, like the, like I said, plant. I think it was the clove that I was tasting and the peppery tongue, but it's way less. So I think adding the water, I I prefer that. Uh, well, on that note, I guess we're going to move on. I am itching so bad I'm going to go take a shower as soon as we're done with this. <laughs> um, I really like it with some water in there. I understand why people make this their, uh, their daily drinker. Yeah. 
Yeah, Go this is cheap. 25 bucks. Typically, you know? it's pretty easy to find, uh, although I haven't been able to find it around here. But I do know of a store through a friend where it's regularly available. And I'm I'm going to give old Granddad a solid seven. That's pretty high 114. For Granddad, 114. 114. Did you put a seven? Because seven plus seven is 14. No. <laughs> I'd put a seven because I thought it was a seven. Um, <laughs> personally, I would put it at a, like a five and a half, six. Okay. Which one do you want me to write down? Uh, I'd give it a six. Six. I think right. for me, that little pepper is a lot, even with a little bit of water. And I tend to have a expensive palate. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> if you've listened before when Shelby's been on, you would know that. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, guys. Well, that wraps it up. Um, we're going to, I'm going to get out of here and go take a shower. I, like I said at the beginning, kind of, it's been a weekend and I'm just not in the best mood. Um, I'm very annoyed with everything and I have been sitting here scratching nonstop. So I'm going to take a shower. Uh, (laughs) You guys have a great week. Thank you to everybody um, out there listening, liking, subscribing, rating. Um, Go check out whiskeyandwonder.com. Check out the Patreon. Vote on the uh, whether or not old granddad 114 goes into the bourbon infinity bottle. I... Certainly hope it does, personally. But you guys are the judge on that. So we'll, uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks for letting me join today. Yeah, good time. Absolutely. Thank you for joining and volunteering. And I didn't have to present uh, something on on the history of abortion. At I yeah. think that's a better topic coming from a lady. Um, so <laughs> I'm glad glad for you being here. Um, I think it was an interesting topic, and uh, I actually learned a lot. So yeah, thanks same. again. Yeah, absolutely. So, y'all, we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Everybody, be safe on the Fourth of July. Make sure you don't drink and drive. And cheers.